Donna Ulrich. transformations and we're going to talk about those but one of the biggest ones is the room that you're sitting in and Uncle High School now shares space with Quest Early College High School and I have with me my friend Jeanette who wants to bend your ear a couple of seconds about Quest Early College High School and then I'll talk about specifically about Uncle High School. Welcome, we're glad y'all are here today. Um, this is Quest Early College High School. We are a high school in Noble ISD. Our students uh, are partnered with Lone Star College, and when our students graduate from high school, they graduate with their high school diploma and their associate's degree from Lone Star. Um, it's a pretty amazing program. Thank you, Dr. Pearson, <coughs> for your participation in that. Um, another big thing that our students do every week is we go out on Fridays and do community service every Friday. Um, if your business is interested in having an intern um, in the upcoming semester and next year, uh, we will have an internship fair here on January 6th. And I have cards and other information over here. So if you're interested in having one of our students intern at Give Love Community Service, um, we'll be happy to hook you up with that. So thank you everyone for being here. Thanks to that. So now for Uncle High School. So I met with many of you last spring and we talked about plans for this school year. And we had two main goals when we spoke. And one of those was to rebuild culture and pride within the Wildcat area, Wildcat country part of Uncle High School. And the second was to look at our philosophy related to academics and how we can move forward in building academic success at Uncle High School. So over the summer, with help of Scott Brady and his architect firm, Joyner Architects, we worked on the physical plant, and that work is still in progress. We worked on our two main hallways, reconfiguring those hallways, adding some, I'll say, things for aesthetic value, carpet, some, um, what do we call those big picture frames that we're putting all those pictures in? They're really this, big, this cool, play. acrylic <laughs> picture frames. <laughs> they're a part of Wildcat Country and just doing some updates because we know the first thing we notice when we walk in the building is what we see. So that has been a lot of work over the summer and been completed after the Christmas break. We also worked on how do we get our community parents and students more actively involved. And that started in August. We had a two-day freshman orientation which uh, about 75% of the incoming freshmen attended that. It's an all-day affair. We had them lunch. We had a really great time letting them know about our expectations about Humble, tours of the building, meeting key people, meeting the cheerleaders, learning our school song, getting them involved in school. The other thing we did, thanks to Light of the World Christian Fellowship and Higher Expectation Church of the main two churches, we worked with five area churches to put together a mentor program for our freshman class. We're calling that Vision 2020. And our goal is to start with about 20 freshmen that either have socio social, emotional, or academic needs and partner them one-on-one -on -one with a mentor from one of our area churches. And that actually kicked off this week, and we're very excited about that. So thanks to, to Pastor Martin and, and the other area churches who've been involved in that. We worked really hard for homecoming, and I hope that you saw all of the Twitter posts and in the newspaper, the Chronicle, and the Tribune. We had a great homecoming parade. We didn't win our football game, but we had a lot of fun at our football game. <laughs> um, so, but we, we do play tonight, just so you know, and we're going to win tonight. We already have that set up. So, uh, Homecoming parade hadn't happened in about eight or ten years. We uh, were excited to bring that back to Umbo High School. We had about eight uh, elementary schools participate in that, as well as our two feeder middle schools, Walt Southern Middle School and Humble Middle School. Uh, the alumni, I think, probably could have had more floats than anybody else, so we had two different cars with alumni that came back and participated in the parade, so a great time. So we're well on our way with building our goal that has to do with culture. Our goal that has to do with academic success um, is, a little, is a little not as tangible, I would say, as our goal that has to do with culture. 
So we have also, at the end of last year, we were approved by the Texas Education Agency to be a STEM designated school, science, technology, engineering, and math. So we have a group of 40 freshmen that are beginning a cohort group of students that will be involved in our STEM initiative. These are students who've all expressed an interest in being involved specifically in engineering as their career focus post-secondary. And so we're using a curriculum called Project Lead the Way, which will help our students have some skills that will prepare them to go on to a four-year university and study engineering, any type of engineering, from biomedical to structural engineering to civil engineering to chemical engineering, whatever type they like to study. Along with that, we've begun a discussion with Lone Star College to offer those students dual credit classes their sophomore and junior year that are also geared toward what they will need at the colleges that they will look for for engineering. And we're excited about that. We would like to be able to offer these students the opportunity to be core complete when they leave high school, or if they want to be really ambitious, have the opportunity for them to have an associate's degree in applied science. So that conversation has been ongoing this year. And that uh, really is focusing again with our freshman class. Our, our motto is um, Vision 2020 because our freshman group that started on the high school this year will graduate in the year 2020. And so we put a lot of efforts and energy into that freshman group. So we're excited. It's been a great start. We finished the, uh, the first two grading periods. We're well into finishing up our first main grading period at the end of the nine weeks. And kids are doing great, and I'm open for any questions. If anybody needs, has any questions for me? Okay, good. Glad you don't have questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to now introduce my new boss, who uh, I am thrilled is a part of Alma High School. I got to spend a little bit of time with her, and I'm excited that she's here because she has a passion for what happens in individual classes. We have been able to talk about instruction, the philosophy of instruction, and as a high school principal, that's really fun. Um, I know that she's been transplanted from Colorado, and she's going to really probably like Texas a whole lot more than Colorado. I feel all that snow and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're excited that she's here. We're, we're excited that she is our new leader because we know that she's going to help the great the best school district in the state of Texas be even better than we already are. So if you'll welcome Dr. Liz Fagan. I'm being required to use the... Uh... All right. Well, first I just want to say thank you for being here. I can't tell you how impressed I am. I've been to several BizComs, and the attendance has been fantastic. Um, I'm just so impressed with the community engagement in our school district, and it is our school district, and so uh, that means a lot to us that you're here and that you care, and uh, we just want you to know that we really value the partnership and we hope to continue it uh, as we are and, and even grow in that. I also uh, would be, I have to just say briefly that I'm so proud of, of Quest and Humble High School. The way that they have come together into one building is really um, something you just don't often see happen in secondary schools, and these, these leaders have been nothing but pure class uh, as they've come together and worked together in the best interest of students. And what a great start to the year uh, for both schools. So I'm very proud of them, and I want to make sure and say that. So welcome to Quest Early College High School. You are sitting in it right now. If you didn't know, then you missed the back wall, but, um, but uh, that's a really cool mural, I just have to say. And uh, so it's really exciting what's going on here in this building. And um, Donna is doing a fantastic job with all the things she said. So it is an exciting year in, in our school district. And um, as you know, I started here about July 5th. And I've had an opportunity to go to several BizComs. And I'm working my way through all of our schools, uh, spending time with a lot of different stakeholder groups in our community. And uh, I've worked together with the board and we're all excited because we're about to embark on a journey together to really figure out, you know, Donna said, take our already best school district to the next level. And um, so we're, we're in this conversation about what does that look like? How do we start to do that? And so um, the board has given us permission and is, is very supportive uh, of the fact that we would like to reach out into the community and talk with folks like you and many others about you know, what are your dreams for the next iteration of us? What, where should we go from here? What are the things that our students need to know and be able to do to be successful in our community as citizens, in our workforce, 
uh, if they come and work for you as an intern or if they want uh, a position there long term. What does that look like? And we want to make sure that we continue that partnership in every way by collaborating with you and setting ourselves uh, on our next course and our next direction. So you're probably going to actually see as we move forward some opportunities to participate in that, and I certainly hope that you will, and I hope that you'll encourage friends and those that you represent to do so as well. Um, we really do sincerely want to hear um, from everybody in the community so that as we move forward, it is a collective vision uh, that we all share for what our students, what we want to guarantee every child in our school district uh, as they move forward over the next, maybe they have five years left or maybe they have 13 years left with us, whatever the case may be, uh, what do we want to do? And we are going to involve students in that process also. Um, so that that whole thing is, is uh, slated to tentatively kind of kick off on November 2nd. And um, so we hope to bring you updates about that periodically and send information out and invite you to participate uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, that's kind of what's going on right now for all of us. Again, um, I've, I've met most of you, and I've already talked a little bit about my background in history, so I don't want to do that again. Uh, but like Don, I'm happy to answer any quick questions before uh, my time is up. You guys are really great. No. <laughs> but I do have good wait time because I was a chemistry teacher. So, you know, you can't just throw out what's the electron configuration of calcium and you know, and move on, so. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh, I remember that. We'll have a flashback. We'll start to do a little pop quiz biology yeah. this time, yeah. yeah. Just for fun. No, somebody's like, no, no, I've, I've been through that once, thank you. Well, if there's nothing else, I just want to say thank you again. It's a, again, it's an exciting time in our district. We're doing a lot of things um, and can't wait to share all of them with you as they are developed and move forward. And it's going to be, uh, continue to be a great year in Humble ISD. And thank you again for being here. Thank you, Dr. Fagan, and just have heard so many great things about you and, and everything you uh, brought to the district thus far. And so uh, the excitement and the things that are happening from I hear from parents and teachers and administrators has just been wonderful. So again, welcome to, to Humble ISD and the, our community and the Lake Houston area community. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Mr. Rich Enders, Endress, excuse me. Uh, he's managing principal of Edge Development. Rich. I'm uh, Rich Andrus. I'm uh, with Edge Development Partners, and you probably noticed uh, some dirt over on uh, 59. Oh, a little uh, past Greens Road on the uh, west side of the, of the freeway. Uh, in between Rankin, it's been cleared for, oh, God, it's been about 18 months now. And we've been working on a project. And um, we're going to be building uh, 700,000 square feet of uh, industrial uh, tech space over there. Uh, the development is called International Tech Park Houston. Um, this is going to be one of the finest developments in the city of Houston as far as industrial space because our development is uh, not going to be your normal all concrete industrial development. It's going to be land, professionally landscaped, have jogging paths and picnic areas and lakes. Um, the reason we did that is we felt in the area, since it hasn't been built for you know decades, um, we decided to build something special to kind of kick off what's going on in the area and we're really part being part of the humble area, you guys bring up what's going on out here and all the development that's going on. You probably noticed a lot of tracks being cleared and moved around. There's a lot of developments that are proposed to go out here, and we're probably one of the first. Uh, we're probably um, we're probably about 30 to uh, 45 days away from having all of our entitlements. We've had some difficulties getting some entitlements, but as of yesterday, we've got approval on everything, so now we just documented everything to get it approved, and we should be under construction um, here by the end of the year. Um, our development is 72 acres. We talked about where it is. It's uh, deed restricted. It's got arm off of uh, ramps in front of the property. Um, the accessibility, if we think, is, is great because, you know, we're, we're right off the ramp on the beltway, so you just get right on the freeway and go the beltway either way. You're downtown in 15 minutes. You're in the ship channel in 20 minutes. You're at the Grand Parkway in 10 minutes. 
and because of what's going on with 50 hours and the development out here, we're still um, underutilized as far as freeway, so the traffic's not that bad, and you don't have tolls. So we've had a lot of uh, interest in this project, and one of the things that they have said is we love the traffic and we love there's no tolls. So we were right on the mark when we said that's one of our marketing pitches because it seems to be coming up every time we talk to somebody. The accessibility to the to the uh, to the airport is the international shipping all over the world. That's why we call it the International Tech Park, because it is going to be international. And we talked about the amenities that we're going to have. Um, the look and feel of the project, this is our first building. that's is right on the, the northeast corner on the freeway. Um, it's kind of got a little retail um, uh, a look to it. And we did that on purpose. Um, this, this building is 33,000 square feet. It can be divided up into, into three different parcels so that if showrooms come along and they want to have a showroom, they can have uh, you know, three different showrooms. The middle part of the, of the uh, building is actually a drive-through in case one big tenant comes in. They can drive through the middle of this building, pick up their supplies and drive on. The entire building has been designed so they can have 20 ton crane ready throughout the entire building. If it divides up into three tenants, two of the tenants can have 20 ton crane ready facilities. Um, so that, that's kind of the look and feel of the first building. Um, the buildings that are going to be in the project are arranged from the low side of 20,000 feet to 225,000 feet. They're all going to be seven and a quarter inch tilt wall, class A buildings, 20 ton crane ready, 483 phase electric, uh, 3.7 uh, <coughs> ratio of land so that all the buildings can have yards if they need it. All the buildings will be fenced so you won't see the yards. So when you're driving by, you won't see equipment and stuff sitting, uh, sitting out in the yards. And there'll be 22 foot clear height, which gives you like a 30 foot ceiling. Drive through capabilities. We're going to have a, an ongoing speculative and build the zoo program. So every time you drive by, there'll always be one building up that somebody can move in. And then there'll be several places that they can purchase land, lease land, and they'll build them wherever they want. They'll have to maintain the look and feel of the project. But as long as they maintain the look and feel of the project, then sure, we'll build them the building. Um, this is the other prototype. Uh, this is actually the second and third building. There are two buildings connected. Um, you can see this is not your normal industrial looking building. Um, we put a lot of thought and effort and money behind these buildings to make them look first class. My background is working for the Sitchers of both Greenway Plaza and half of downtown. So I'm used to only building first class stuff. And that's the way that we look at things. So we're, we're very excited about this project. We're very excited that Humboldt's going to get this project. And we look forward to working with everybody in the community on a go-forward basis on uh, getting this project complete. It'll probably take anywhere from three to, who knows, ten years to build this entire project out. It could take five, but we just don't know. We're going ahead and get started here shortly. Even with the downturn in the economy, we want to be in front of the market, market instead of behind the market. And so we're, we're slowly moving forward. Our first spec of the building will probably start construction March, April, and be done next fall. Okay? If you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of them. Or just... <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich. And uh, I forgot that we do uh, stream this or we upload it. Upload it. Upload it. So, uh, it, Speakers, could you mind using the microphone? And you're welcome to stand up, up there, or here, or behind the podium. But I forget, and the sound doesn't pick up on the uh, streaming if we don't use the microphone. So, sorry, Rich, we may not be able to hear you when we upload that, but we'll, we'll try to put some editing on that. So, <laughs> so our next speaker, speaker is Noel uh, Cardenas. He's Vice President of Operations for Memorial Hermann Northeast. Noel? I need this, though. Oh, you need yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah, for video purposes. Sorry. All right. Okay, good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to start off by introducing two new members of our uh, Memorial Hermann Medical Group practice, and that is uh, Dr. Phyllis Walker here. She's a pediatrician out in Atascocia PS clinic. Who's joined us? He's a uh, family medicine and sports. Director. He's, he's 
it's located at the Kingwood Town Center. Uh, and I know he keeps looking at that facility over there, eager to move into it. All right. So we recently got some feedback based on the, the Lake Houston uh, folks that here that voted. And uh, this came from a Living Magazine. And you all voted us the best hospital in uh, the Lake Houston area, as well as the best emergency room, uh, best uh, therapy services, and best urgent care. Now, note, the Summer Creek uh, CCC, uh, it doesn't, it's not... It's not an urgent care center, but we do thank you for voting us as, as the best urgent care center. <laughs> we also received some uh, great news from uh, U.S. News and World Report. We're ranked uh, number 10 out of 98 uh, in the hospitals in the Houston and the Gulf Coast region, which is, again, phenomenal news. We also received word that the uh, Texas Medical Center was ranked number 2 in Texas, and that our rehabilitative facility known as TIER, is ranked number two in the country. Yeah. And again, this is, these, uh, these scores are based on quality, patient safety, uh, also the uh, patient experience and patient satisfaction scores. So again, this is again phenomenal. And again, we were ranked number 29 out of 602 hospitals in Texas. So a significant accomplishment for us. And again, we just continue to describe the, the best and to continue to support our community. So you probably heard the news about our purchase of the hospital. We've been uh, leasing the facility for the last uh, 10 years from the Northeast Hospital Authority in the city of Humboldt. And that process is now complete, so on May 18th that announcement was official. Uh, so now we'll move on to the next phase, and then, of course you saw probably the, the articles there uh, with Heath and the comments and so forth. But again, this affirms our commitment to the Lake Houston commitment, and that we're here to stay and to continue to, to support you all with your medical needs. Uh, our future, with that comes uh, what's next for us. And so what you're going to start to see here in the next the month or so is a lot of movement on the campus. Uh, that will begin with some construction on the east side, and that's towards 59 and, and I-69. And what that's going to do is provide us more visibility from, that, uh, from the road. And so all that area to the right as you're looking towards the hospital off of 59 is going to be cleared out. And uh, there will be some uh, new parking that will be placed there. And the reason for that is, is we need that parking there for the tower that's going on the west side of the facility. This is a replacement tower. Uh, again, you can see this will be on the McKay side. Um, and in this new tower, it's, again, it's a replacement tower for our south tower, which is a little it's, it's old and rooms are small. And so this is, the rooms in this new tower will be double the size. So it'll be significant. Again, it's going to be a 24-month project. As I mentioned earlier, that iconic front and that change to that parking, that, that's going to move real quick. So that's going to be supposed to be completed around June of uh, 2017. So that's going to happen. And then this tower, as it goes in, you're going to start to see a lot of cranes and a lot of activity there. And this will take the 24 months, it'll take 24 months to build it. Uh, we're looking at December of 2018 for the uh, tower to be completed. And then we'll transition those services that are in the South Tower now, which is Three med surge floors, medical surgical floors, will move into this facility. Uh, it'll be a five stories. So the first floor of that will provide a new uh, 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 cafeteria and kitchen, as well as some expanded services uh, to support our ancillary uh, uh, requirements that support uh, the hospital. So again, just we're just really excited about this. I know this is long and coming, but again, it, it's really going to show our again really. Uh, Tell the community we're here and we're here to support y'all. But again, you saw in Heath's article that it doesn't just end there. There's more coming. So we continue to look at opportunities as we think strategically over the next few years. And so you'll see some upcoming milestones for us. Um, the first will be our 40th year celebration. So that will be the hospital when it was first established back in 1977. And so we'll be celebrating that 40th year anniversary with our presence in this, uh, this area. And again, you can see all the different things that have happened over those 40 years. And then we'll also be celebrating our 10th year anniversary, so at the same time. So as we took over the hospital in uh, January of 2007, this is big for us. Uh, you, can see, you can see some of the things that happened there over the course of the last 10 years. Again, initially it was a big focus on quality and patient safety, and, and of course some of that we, we received feedback right away with some of these awards and this recognition. That Eisenberg Patient Safety Award, that was huge for the system, but a lot of it came from the accomplishments that had happened at Northeast. And a lot of that was our focus on high reliability, the, the quality, and the patient safety aspect. 
And then, of course, we've grown. And in 2013, of course, the Summer Creek uh, CCC, which was the first of the CCCs, we now have three and then four more coming throughout Houston. And then you can just see how that continued. And of course, we, and then which will end in uh, with our next major uh, milestone, which is the, uh, the new tower. Then with CCC, it's moving quick. You can see there from the pictures on the right, they're almost done with the outer shell. That will be handed over here to us in the next uh, month or so, and then we will then begin to outfit the inside to make it look like a clinic. And I know that Dr. G is very excited about moving over from the town center into this facility. And this facility will be over 44,000 square feet. It will be the largest of our convenient care centers. It will have an emergency room. It will have a, the, uh, as I mentioned, the medical group will move over from the town center. We'll also have sports medicine and rehab. The outpatient imaging and diagnostics, the key about the outpatient imaging is this will have bone scan and uh, mammography capability. And the last thing I want to mention is in the pink, uh, and I just want to recognize our honoree right here, Tom Carr will be there. So if you uh, want to purchase a table or you want to attend the event, you can uh, get with Lynanne. She's also put that information out for you all on the tables. Uh, we are something new that has started this year is that you can make a $50 donation uh, to somebody who has battled cancer, and you can put that in their name, and then we will include their name on the program so that we know that you're thinking about them and what they've gone through with their fight with cancer. Questions? Yes, sir. My favorite uh, place is the Neighborhood Health Center. It sounds like you're going to level it. It um, is. <laughs> am I still going to be able to go there and get my use? They, they are working on relocating. <laughs> we are relocating it as of November 1st, right. by weekend. Yes. Right. Okay. So, uh, Dr. New fancy location. Yeah, so it is relocating. Um, and that will be coming, I'll give that announcement will be coming out. There's also a warehouse there that we've been putting, placing a lot of things that have been there. There's a lot of historical items in there. That's being cleared out now as well because all that will be completely leveled. And uh, I know that some of the trees will stay, but again, it will, it will really open up our campus and make us very much more visible uh, to those driving by. And add parking. And add parking. That's, that's the other thing that we're really trying to focus in on because as we know, as the tower comes in on the other side, <coughs> The uh, parking on the west side is going to be significantly impacted because there will be a, really a, a large standoff uh, zone from the facility, the campus itself. No other questions other than Tom? <laughs> yes, sir. Do you have a date for the opening of the Kingwood CCC? Right now we're looking at summer of 2017. Uh, I would really like to give you a better date. Uh, but one of the things, you know, things can happen over the wintertime with weather and, and so forth, but it has really come along... Uh, if you look at it on the inside, it's just completely empty, but the outside, the landscaping's in, and, and so forth. It looks really, I mean, it looks like you could actually walk into it now and use it as a clinic, but there's nothing on the inside. Can I quick? Yes, real quick. So, um, you're the first group to be able to purchase these raffle tickets. So, we're super excited for In the Peak. So, we have a list of all of the raffle prizes, and you can get with uh, Lenan or myself, and uh, we'll certainly hand out some raffle tickets for you. There are going to be some great yeah. uh, raffles there. Uh, I know for sure there's a four-person suite for the Texan-Detroit Lion game, Lions game. It's, it's a suite fully... That's going to be an auction item. That's an auction item. You have to buy a seat. It's going to be a seat. I actually know that because my wife's been working that piece. But you got to show up to uh, to be there for the yeah, auction. Yeah, you got to buy a seat. But again, it's, it's a really, I think it's like a $1,500 package. And you yeah. come in and... And then we'll also have a Texans autographed helmet as part of that package as well. You know, there's a vacation in there. There's... A lot of new stuff that you can come in. Again, this this the purpose behind this program is to provide uh, uh, mammograms for those uh, women in need that cannot afford it. And of course, they go through a process in which to see if they're eligible. But again, this is about you know taking care of those who need it uh, when they run into that type of situation. All right, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Gardens. Well, if you've driven to the mall lately, you might be like, well, what am I supposed to do here? If you've seen the entrances and exits, um, you no longer have to stop. 
when you come in. I just uh, noticed yeah. that a couple weeks ago. I don't go to the mall that often as much as I love it being here. Um, just like most guys, we try to avoid the mall if we can. But anyway, <laughs> we, uh, my wife is, I think, a frequent flyer member or whatever they call it for Newburgh Mall. But anyway, uh, we're, we're really thrilled to have them right here in our, our back backyard and, and all the things they provide. So to tell you about some great things happening there, please welcome Andrew McKinney, General Manager of the Mall. I don't think I'm talented enough to be I'm going to start back here. There you go. I like it. That, that work for you? That works. You like that, right? <laughs> I do. Good uh, thank you very much. Appreciate the introduction. I'm a guy. I do love them all. I spend uh, <laughs> in this number of hours with them. Um, My wife likes to call me periodically and say, what are you doing? Are you sleeping, eating, walking around? Uh, I say, yeah, that's kind of what I do. Um, I, I've only been here about six weeks. Um, I came from uh, Boca Raton. Um, Eisner Park and uh, been in contact with friends, family, and uh, associates there in the last week and um, just uh, narrowly missed that and certainly thinking about those folks today. Um, but uh, we've, we've moved in here, my wife, myself, uh, our three children, we're in uh, Lake Houston area settled, very happy to be here. Uh, my kids are four, six, and eight. Two of them uh, are in Umbel ISD, first and second grade, and they're, they're, they're loving it and we, we're thrilled to be here. And me personally, I've been uh, very well received by the community and the city leaders so far, and I've been very um, pleased from the feedback that I've gotten, the support that I've received from the city management, uh, city manager Bill Bosky, um, police chief um, Dawes, uh, and the chamber uh, leadership with Robert Sitton and Jen Armstrong. I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of this group, and I'm happy to share what we have going on. And, um, you know, I work for General Growth Properties. We've been... Um, here in the Houston area for a long time, we uh, own and operate 125 shopping centers around uh, 40 states. Uh, I was in Chicago for seven years at Water Tower Place on Michigan Avenue, went to Meisner Park in Boca Raton, and I've come here to Deerbrook Mall um, because I have my wife's family is in this area, and we're, uh, we're here to stay and we're very happy to be here. Uh, General Growth is a great property to be a part of. We have five malls in the Houston area, um, Willowbrook, Woodlands, Baybrook, First Colony, and Deerbrook. And uh, all of them have uh, Dick's Sporting Goods stores opening, uh, and I'll mention that in here in a moment. Um, you're all more familiar probably with uh, Deerbrook than I am if you've been in the area a while. So uh, I don't need to tell you uh, where it is or what it is, but if you haven't been there in a while, this is the entrance by Sears and uh, Barnes and & Noble. My office is just in there past the escalator, so feel free to come in and see me at any time. Um, and the property was built in 1984. Uh, remodeled in 03 when we brought in AMC, anchored by Penny, Sears, Dillard's, Macy's, um, uh, Forever 21, and we've got uh, Dix coming online. And that seems to be the thing that everybody's been talking to me about since we got here, so I'll touch on that in a moment. Property focus, um, you know, leasing, uh, leasing, leasing, leasing. That's our company, that's what we do. We concentrate on bringing the right merchant mix in there, bringing uh, the excitement, entertainment, and having people want to come to the property and spend time uh, and dollars. <coughs> My focus as property manager is to support leasing, but I also focus a lot on the customer experience and the guest experience and what you're doing when you come to the property, the path to purchase, what you do, what you do when you're coming to the center, when you're coming to the center, when you're walking in um, the center, and when you're leaving the center. That's a major focus. I also spend a lot of time with my operations team on infrastructure improvement. Um, that's, I won't concentrate too much on that except to say that we do spend millions of dollars a year on the property uh, on, on upkeep and improvement, and we do a lot in our company regarding sustainability. We have an annual sustainability report that we release with our annual earnings, and uh, you can go online on our website and see that in our investor portfolio. Uh, we have concentrated a lot of time and effort on that uh, across our portfolio. Uh, as an example, at Deerbrook, uh, last year all the common area lighting was upgraded to LED. Actually, this month we're doing all the parking lot lighting to switch to LED. A couple years ago, they did a smart uh, irrigation program that has cut uh, water con uh, consumption in the, um, in the parking areas uh, by 50%. So there's a lot of concentration on that. Uh, and I know we're an oil, oil country, but our, com our company spent a lot of time and money and effort on uh, solar. And uh, we're one of the top 10 solar producers in the country right now. So uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, focus and issue on that, a lot of pride in that as well. Uh, at the mall, new Burgess in 2016. Big Sporting Goods, October 21st, 
Uh, they had a PR release announcement that just came out within the last day or so. Uh, we actually have uh, Warren Moon coming to the property on the evening of the 21st. Uh, Jose Cruz, uh, former Houston uh, outfielder, will be there on the 23rd. They're doing those types of things all over uh, uh, the, the five malls that uh, we've got that are opening to locations, as well as the other five with other um, uh, locations on the property. We got Think Geek this year. If you haven't been there to visit Think Geek, uh, Think Comic Con in the retail store. Uh, 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 they've got focus on Star Wars and Iron Man and things like that, and, uh, accessories and, uh, and 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 apparel for the, uh, for that customer. It's been very well received, and it's the first one of the Houston market. It's a great get for us. Uh, Shoe Palace, Apex Sunglasses, I mean, uh, um, Sunglass Hut uh, concept, Encore Shoes, remodels and expansions. We spend a lot of time with people on that. Uh, Hollister, Champs, uh, Forever 21 Finish Line, Tora, Journey's Kids, 3D Games have all done cosmetic remodels this year, and we're very proud of what they've done. Actually, Journey's Kids Barricade just came down this morning. We're excited to see them get open in their new um, or renovated location um, next week. Um, you know, the other thing we've concentrated a lot about, and I talked about guest experience, was uh, digital initiatives, Wi-Fi throughout the center, our website and mall app, we were finding that nearly 80% or more of our customers were, were um, getting information about the property through mobile. So we've really optimized our website for mobile. We've also got our mall app that's all 25, 125 malls. You can designate uh, Deerbrook as your, uh, your mall of choice. You can look at it and see that what's going on at Dick's or other locations around the property. You know, just this morning we had a um, um, Selena uh, cosmetic um, line that was released by Mac at Macy's. They had you know nearly 200 people out there this morning. Uh, James Avery we, uh, is a uh, jewelry line that was just released at uh, Dillard's that they're very happy about, and we we're trying to get the word out about that. And we've optimized it so when you're getting around the property, you can do a lot of stuff like. Watch your vehicle so you know how to get back to your car. And, inter uh, and navigate uh, through our interactive directory where you can say, where, I am, where am I? Oh, I'm next Macy's. Where do I want to get to? Let's try to get to Barnes & Noble. And you can, uh, you, it'll, it'll basically tell you how to get there. You can see, take escalator uh, to center court. Go down to level one. Click on next step, and it'll tell you how to get down there. So we're doing that, and we're uh, uh, making that uh, GPS and enabled and making that opportunity so that people can navigate the properties a lot easier. Um, my focus, and it was alluded to, has also been how do we make it more comfortable and convenient for people to get there? There's a lot of places you can, uh, you can shop. We want Deerbrook Mall to be the, the center of choice for the people in the Blake Houston uh, community. And so we've worked on a lot and we'll continue to work on enhanced parking programs to reserve space for customers up front. Uh, and we've done modified ring road traffic patterns to improve ingress and egress. Uh, with, um, Modest success so far, and I've gotten a lot of uh, feedback on that. I, I'm not going to take too many questions on that right now. <laughs> but feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to talk you through it. Uh, it's a work in progress, but we do think it's going to make improvement. We spent a lot of time talking to the police department about it, a lot of time talking to our corporate uh, uh, national operations people, and we've seen the success at other shopping centers around the country, and we think that once, it's, uh, once it gets dialed in perfectly, it's going to make an improvement, especially during our peak holiday season. Um, a couple other things we've got great this, uh, this coming holiday season. If you haven't been there in a while, this is going to be a good opportunity to come back. Uh, new Santa themed uh, location, uh, come in and take pictures that are starting in November. Uh, Norman Rockwell themed Santa visit, so you can come see that Norman Rockwell themed uh, uh, as you're coming through and you're taking a picture with Santa. We're very excited about that. And then as part of the, the Dick's remodel and the relocation, uh, or the uh, we've got relocation of our. Uh, children's play area. So we've got a new play area that's, uh, that's in development, under construction right now that we'll be bringing in in, this, in November as well. And I, it's uh, due for a, a, for a replacement. And we're very pleased and happy about that. So a lot going on, on the property. Very happy to be here and uh, really look forward to meeting all of you. And you know, like I said, come see me. Give me a call if you have questions about any of those things, stuff that's going on. Certainly go to our website and go to our mall app. If you have questions about how, how do I get into the property, what the heck, where did this stop sign go, you can also uh, <laughs> give me a call as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And with Dick's opening up, now I have a reason for sure to go. <laughs> So, my wife's going to be going, you're going there again? Okay, next we have Marianne Esser. She's president of Mercer Society. Marianne? Thank you. Hi. Can you see me? 
little short, and I just want to make certain y'all can sit here. Also, I will go up on the stage if that's if that's necessary. First, before we begin, just to raise some hands. How many people have ever been to Mercer Botanic Gardens? Oh, yay! Good. Okay. How many have actually heard of it but haven't been there yet? Okay. Good. Good. So I don't have to tell you a little bit about how wonderful that place is. Um, the Mercer Society is actually the nonprofit that supports and, and is partners with the Mercer Botanic Gardens. 43 years ago, the Thelma and Charles Mercer lived in Humble, and they had a beautiful little garden paradise that they created. They decided that at that time, they were ready to retire. So they moved on to the Rio Grande, but they didn't want their garden paradise to become a shopping center. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't want their garden paradise to turn into that. So, what they often do is they, they went to the county and they talked to Precinct 4 and said, how about you buy it, we'll sell it to you at under market price, and you keep it with the stipulation that it'll always be a garden. And the county did that. And so that's how Mercer Botanic Gardens really got started. And uh, now uh, that was a 14-acre parcel. We're now up to 34 acres on the garden side. But in April, we had a wake-up call from Mother Nature. That was called the Tax Day Flood. And at that time, and you're going to see some pictures here that I, I'm just, I'm not going to tell you what you're looking at because we, I want to shorten this, um, but you'll see before and afters. Um, that day on tax day, the creek overflowed, and it really overflowed. And it came down, and it came down. Um, we lost two of our gardens, the, the Cypress Creek Ramble and Story Lake, were really massively devastated by the flooding. We knew then that any future development was going to have to go on higher elevated land. The problem was, where is that going to be? We don't want to move the gardens. So there's one, we have a limited opportunity of time. There's um, a 34-acre parcel that is right adjacent to the gardens that is available, but we have to move quickly on this. Um, it was owned by the Betcher family. We call it the Betcher Tract. And the, the, the grandfather died a year ago, and so the family trust wants to sell it. And so we are going to, we, we have an arrangement where we're going out to the community and asking the community to help us raise the money as a nonprofit. We always had our little program was built upon plant sale. You may have heard of March Mart and the autumn plant sale and the spring plant sale. We don't make a lot of money off the plant sales. So we're turning our focus now to becoming more of a philanthropic and looking at raising really some serious money so that we can expand the gardens, so that we can update them, we can add more parking, we can do programs that are geared towards not only plant gardeners, but also people who love music and art and food, and bringing them into the gardens um, and enjoy those things amidst a wonderful, beautiful background. So that's our, going to be our focus from this point forward. Um, on October the 31st, we will close on the first two parcels of, the, of that 34 acres. That'll be 10 plus acres. We have the Charles and Mercer Charitable, um, uh, I'm sorry, the Charles and Thelma Mercer Fund. They, they told us if we went out and raised money, they would match dollar for dollar. And then they said, if you come short, we will also come in and we'll give you the balance of what you need. Well, then we went to the county and Commissioner Cagle has been our partner. And he came up and said, if you raise half of it, I'll give, we'll get the commissioner's court to raise half of it. So we went to the commissioner's court. They approved it last month. And we are set to go. We're going to close on that first track. The society is only $8,000 short of our $50,000 goal. That was what we set as if we could raise that kind of money, we would be, we thought we would be in good shape. So I'm here today to ask you if you like to see the gardens expand and be on higher, drier ground and be here for generations to come. There's a little sheet on your table. Fill it out. You know, I tell people any any donation helps, $20, 
two hundred dollars, whatever. You know, we're, we we'll take anything. Um, we're not we're not proud. <laughs> I also wanted to tell you, I have brought up my partner in crime here. This is Jamie Hartwell. She's our volunteer coordinator. She's brand new to the position. Uh, Suzanne Chapman had the position before us, before Jamie. And Jamie has set, is heading up a wonderful volunteer program. I'm going to hand the mic over to her for a few minutes and let her talk about it. And then, but the, while, they're, while she's doing that, look on the back of my business card. Somebody has written on the back, you are the winner. And if you have that card, you're going home with this beautiful Madagascar periwinkle. There you go. There's our winner. Congratulations. The park director, uh, Darren Newling, picked that plant out, especially for this meeting. It's apparently a brand new plant and uh, smaller flowers, more compact. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, just a few things. I think all of y'all have a uh, Mercer um, pamphlet here as far as volunteering. We love volunteers. We love high schools. We love corporations. We love individuals, people that know about plants, people that know nothing about plants. Mercer is just a lot more than plants. It's conservation. It's sustainability. Um, if you really want to go someplace where your, your efforts will be appreciated, and that they will show, that would be Mercer. Just a few quick things. We have the March Mark coming up in um, March of 2017, and that is our big plant sale. This is the 43rd year for the sale. Um, it's presented by the Mercer Society and volunteers as a fundraising effort. We have 46,000 volunteers during this two-day event. We have amazing plants and educational booths. I know because I've bought a lot of plants there. <laughs> My yard is full of Mercer. Um, we're looking, always looking for volunteers to assist with ticket writing and cashiering if you're interested in that. We'll provide you training uh, either in advance or on site. It's a great opportunity for groups, like I said. You can wear your Lake Houston Chamber of Commerce shirt. And already um, we have the Woodlands Chamber of Commerce has signed up to help, along with Exxon Global and Spring High School. So we'd love to have uh, Umbel ISD participate, ROTC, um, anyone who would like to come out. It's a great place, it's a beautiful place, and we hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you again for having us. We are really thrilled to be here, and I hope you will come out. You know, Mercer is a beautiful, peaceful place. And I can tell you that I invite people to come for behind the scene tours. And they always say when they leave, it really is a peaceful place. The, the, the scents that come out from the gardens, it alters your mood. You look at heaven, your, your life is enhanced. It's just a wonderful place. So those who haven't come out, come on. Come on out. We're at 22306 Aldine Westfield, right in your backyard. Um, and we'd love to have you. Thank you so much. Okay, our final speaker. We're going full circle. We start with education, we're going to end with education. Please welcome Jerry Monbaron with the Humble ISD Education Foundation. Yeah. Now we're getting close to our deadlines. I'll talk quickly. All of you should have a flyer. So if you're not familiar with the Humble ISD Education Foundation, we are a separate nonprofit organization that raises funds just to support innovative and creative education programming at Humble ISD. So we have an upcoming golf tournament November 11th. Our esteemed superintendent has even agreed to um, man a one of our game holes, so we appreciate that. We know several of you have already agreed to sponsor this year, have sponsored in the past. Thank you very much for doing that. It's a fun Friday, Friday morning. We feed you breakfast, we feed you lunch, and then um, you can start your weekend early. So you know a lot about that. Let me just, you know about golf trips, let me tell you about why to support. First of all, the Education Foundation has awarded $9.2 million since 2000 the year 2000 to all of Umbel ISD schools to support innovative programming. And I just want to recognize Jerry Levy was one of our founding board members and a chair of our organization. And it's because of his leadership and so many others in our community that has grown our organization to be able to have that sort of impact. The Umbel High School feeder pattern, um, we have awarded grants in all of those elementary to Umbel High Schools, um, Umbel High School to a tune of about a little over a million dollars since 2000. It supports a lot of really important projects. One of them is Brandy Root here at Humble High School. She is the Humble ISD District Teacher of the Year. 
She has received many grants from the foundation. One of them is called the 24-Hour Theater Project. And she literally hits the stopwatch, and then they have 24 hours to the students to write a play, to build the sets, to rehearse their lines, and perform it in 24 hours. It's a, it's a huge feat for them, but we are very proud to support that because not only does it enhance their, their skills in the area of fine arts, but for all of us in the business community, we can recognize those skills of working on a quick deadline, working together as a team to meet your deadline, and I work with you to help me meet my deadline, and those are the important skills that we want our kids to have as they graduate and then have success in the future. So we know there's a lot of opportunities to help our community. We've heard about In the Pink, we've heard about Mercer, and we are just another opportunity for you to help in our community and make it stronger, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, just a couple of uh, announcements. Thank you.